creature. I would leave it to die. So would I. Oh, shameless liar that you are. Your actions and words clash like water and fire. So would I. And finally... I would go to great... L so would I. You have answered me truthfully. You who have been ripped from the ages. Your words do not belie your actions. Hear the spirits speak, my goblins. It is not to be speared, this creature. It may freely dwell among your kind. This now, totem leaves a nasty taste in the mouth and a vicious slitting at the back of the mind. I smell demons. Demons? In that painted tree? Oh, what a strange world you live in. My goblins, gather round your totem. Dance for me, goblins. Reveal me with it a jolly jig. Try again. Mighty staff. Submit to my chilly embrace.
As good as a new penny. Blessed may you be by all seven gods, dear champion. But for your timely intervention, I would have ended up in either an orcish cauldron or the goblin slave pen, whence these thugs were ordered to march me. I'm from Hunter's Edge, a hamlet to the east of here. Heed my advice and stay well away from that pitiable place, for no human may walk there freely anymore. The orcs came in the night, and we stood as much chance as chickens would, locked in a hen house with a pack of starving wolves. Not to mention that our champion Medora had already abandoned us. Those who escaped their initial frenzy, eluded their horrid hunger, were all enslaved. I myself was en route to be sold as a slave to the goblins, but those idiot orcs denied to pay a troll their eternal troll toll. Needless to say, a fight ensued. A fight that brute of a troll won with flying colours. We Merry Three were the only ones to escape the carnage and taking a bit of a breather, that is to say. The fight had made my orc guardians hungry once more. Had Pudgy Pete survived, it'd have been skinned and chopped by now. Regular devils, these orcs. Go ahead. Ask me not why it has been the nucleus of such strife, for I haven't the foggiest. In truth, I don't intend to find out either. The goblins have been the masters of Silver Glen's mines for a while now. Took it by force. From what I hear, the erstwhile miners back in the village have no idea their brethren from Hunter's Edge are being forced to slave in their lost quarry. The more fool them. Thanks again for freeing me, dear champion. I'll make a dash for it to Sy Seal and hope the undead there have grown sluggish enough for me to slip by. All the red ooze mm. coming Seems from these... the... Look! One of the alien aspect approaches. Go on, my boy. State the ancient demand. Ah, uh, um... A tall troll. 
Well nigh correct, my son, but not quite. Um, uh, troll, troll. You come very close in your approximation of the venerable bid, my boy. But a tiny flaw distorts it still. Tap, tap, troll, troll. Capital, my son. Most excellent. I'm very proud of you, indeed. Now then, dearest wanderer of Lucula's leaf-strewn lanes, you have heard our inviolable command. Pay us trolls the toll that is our prerogative, and the bridge shall be yours to cross. I am Bridgekeeper Archibald, and this wee cherub is my dear son, Amodeus. I'm in charge of his education, and will see to it that one day he shall become the greatest bridgekeeper ever to have voiced the hallowed tenet. Troll toll, yes, so he shall. So he shall indeed. Ask them, and I shall answer. Those clubbed unfortunates over yonder, they did not pay the toll, traveler. And to be clubbed, I'm afraid, is the fate that indubitably befalls those who do not heed the infrangible doctrine that is Troll Toll. They say only one of your kind has ever met him, and even that is but a rumor. Maradino is the name this exception went by. A sorcerer. No, you so quit that grimace of eccentric character. I was told he had a lair upon Lucula's desert plain, but have never seen proof myself. All for the better, I believe. For should he have stood in the presence of the king, his presence would have been snuffed decisively and brutally. Bang! With a bang indeed, Amadeus. Because our king deems it equitable that we should do so. His word is law amongst us trolls, and by extension, anyone who travels through his lands, the woods of Lucura. You may refrain from handing us the recompense we are due until next we meet. But I must warn you that to cross the bridge without paying the toll is to invite death upon you. A scythe he will not carry, no, a troll's club instead. Butterflies, they must taste great on bread. You, Tim Frag. I don't understand I why we're staying put. Silver, together. a shiny day to you. Delighted to make your acquaintance. Your interest in my modest person truly flatters me. My name is Doreen, and this is my husband, my flame, my love, my Valentine, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maurice, darling, do be quiet. He never bothered to master the human tongue, you see, and is therefore wholly incapable of indulging in this delightful conversation. No. Yes, yes, that'll do, Maurice. He's just so excited, don't you know, as am I, to go to the golden pastures of Silver Glen, 
Roy, our owner, has been going on and on about how all of us will soon be in a better place indeed. I'm told Silver Glen consists of rolling hills where the grass grows thick, succulent and so very rich that even four-stomached creatures like ourselves can never go hungry. <coughs> Maurice is simply ecstatic. You sure love your daily grass, don't you, honey bench? Isn't he adorable? Howdy! Lovely day for a romp through the forest, ain't it? Ha! Like hell! Goblins round here swarm as thick as flies round my cattle's asses. Put an axe in my bodyguard's face, one of them did. Right where his big drunken nose used to be. So, you wish to partake in a polite little parley about our respective prospects, purposes, and expectations in life, do you? Rotten! I'm Roy. I'm in the animal trade. And instead of knocking back cheap rye in Silver Glen, I'm stuck in a friggin' forest surrounded by totem-worshipping savages that want to use my privates for target practice. There. Now you know it all. Aye, my latest set of merchandise. Joy to hurt them, that lot. Until they crap all over your shoes, that is. Won't cost me fortunes on Boot Black's wages much longer, though. Bought them for cheap from Bursher back in the city, and I'm about to sell them dearly indeed in sacred stone. Full of lunatics, that place. Or so I've been told. They'll slice these beasts from ear to ear the moment they can get their hands on them. Use the blood in rituals or some such. Lunatics, right? Madman. Must you? You may be too tough Donnie. and wiry to... Donnie! Bah! Some thug from Psy Seal he was. All balls, no brains, you know. Perfect set of qualities to lead me past them zombies, I figured. Figured right, I did, until we met them goblins. Now, you can have balls bigger than that bull over there, but it takes a fair bit of wit and cunning to beat a goblin at the hunting game. And Donnie, I tell you, the simple soul would have believed you if you told him eggs grow on eggplants. <laughs> No kidding. Ferocious as a hungry mountain lion, that lot. With swords and spears for talons. Donnie and I must have adventured too far north. I'm just gonna hang low until I can no longer smell him, and then I'll make a dash for it. Without an escort this time. Oh, you'll provide protection, will ya? Be my paladin, my knight in shining armor. Like hell you will. You with your fancy weapons and armor, you rattle like a gypsy's wagon. Every damn goblin between here and the friggin' moon will hear us coming. No, no, I'll get out of here soon enough by my god's damn self. So this cad is leading these beasts to the slaughter. I say we slaughter him. To the slaughter? Now, I don't understand. Now, well, if he wants now, to eat them, he should just eat them. Would have been in stitches there if isn't a goblin that. to be seen around here. We should go be heating up. Our for lunch.
I'm warm as fresh apple pie. <laughs> oh, oh, very sorry. I, I shouldn't laugh. It's just next God's Day is going to be very eventful for the likes of you. Profess? Hardly. Who can stand those dried up old windbags with their podiums and their gavels and their big curly wigs? Wait, what were we talking about? Ah, yes, Sir Hunter. I do not profess to see the future. I simply do. I am the knower of secrets, the conveyor of fates, and have been since the age of two. I'll have roasted rabbit for supper next week. My firstborn, Charlio, will arrive on a clear-skied afternoon, and in seven years' time I'll inherit a pouch of gold as big as a dragon's egg. All this assuming, of course, you do not fail in your mission. Well, certainly not the whole story, if I'm perfectly honest. A rare event, indeed. Some threads are missing from this particular cat's cradle, but I've worked out the major details. It seems, Source Hunter, that the fate of all of us mere mortals rests squarely in your hands. The truth is a grand dame, Source Hunter. I'm sure your jumpy, impish friend would quite agree with me on that point. And I'd like the voices in my head to quit their mewling, but they insist to me as I'll insist to you. Money talks. Six secrets I may have for you, Source Hunter. Granted, you can pay the price. Those who would once commune with the goddess went... That depends. How much have you got? Choose carefully, Source Hunter, for I can only consult the heavens for you a single time. One mustn't become too greedy regarding fate, no, no. A glut of foresight can drive one rather batty indeed. If you meet any wanderers, send them our way, won't you? My priceless collection of life-life ceramic infants won't grow itself, you know. Pleasantly, the vard voice mingles with the forest scape. Oh, do you hear it, friend? The forest music hums, buzzes, falls and rises like waves, like starlight through the atmosphere. Imagination, friend. It's imagination that transforms this music into the surreal. Finally Perhaps defeated. more music can help you unlock your dreams. Perhaps one of my compositions could add some modicum of joy to your life. I'd be so happy to share this gift with you. If it please you, select something from my catalogue. ...by their very souls, the twins, and neither desire to like live a in a world which the other had flown. What's this? I found something.
got under the collar. Saints alive! Are you... are you real? My mind is turning with illusions. The spines! It couldn't have been. Could it? My companions, is it too late? There's cobwebs behind my eyes. Coming out of my ears. Am I... Am I mad? <laughs>